So welcome boys and girls. The first thing we are going to do is go to scratch dot m i t dot e d u. And on this website, you need to create an account. Now, if you already have an account, that's fantastic. You are more than welcome to use that account. So I'm going to click join scratch. Let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see everything. Click join scratch. Now I need to pick a username. So I'm going to choose a username. Now it might be taken already. Mr. McLaughlin. And I'm going to type in innovation. And then I'm going to create a password. Now it says must be 20 characters or shorter. So let's count this. It's giving me an error here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I am three characters too long. So I'm going to have to change that. So let's just change this to MR Innovation. So now I no errors. So now next thing I'm going to do is write a password. Uh, I'm going to hide the password so you can't see it. Make sure it is done correctly in both spots. It'll give me an error if it's not. And I'm going to hit next. Now I have to choose what country I live in. And I live in the United States of America. And I'm going to click next. By the way, that little button window that came up that said save your password, that's a good idea. So that way you, just in case you forget, it does keep you logged in. What month? I was born January, a long time ago, 1973. And it says it will keep this information private for us. So we, they use this information just to confirm ownership and if you contact their team online. So then I got to choose a gender. I get to say whatever I want, or I could just choose not to say. So I'm going to choose not to say. Then I have to put an email address. This should be your school email. Uh, if you already have an account with your school email and you forgot your username and password, we can go over that. But I'm going to first put in an email address. And I think I want to use the one that's associated with this one. Yes. Mr. Tom McLaughlin at gmail.com. It's not my school email, but I already have a school account. So now it says, welcome to Scratch McLaughlin Innovation. You are now logged in. You can start exploring and creating projects. Want to share, comment? Click the link on the email we sent you. So I have to go into my email now and confirm my email. So let's go to my email. I'm just going to go to Gmail. And here I have a confirmation from Scratch that I need to click to confirm my account. So I'm going to click Confirm My Account. And now my account's confirmed. And I'm able to start coding in Scratch. So I'm going to log out. And I'm going to click Sign In. And suppose I didn't remember my username and password. I'm going to click Need Help. Aha. And I could put either in my username or my email address. So if you use your school email address, you would put your school email address in. I'm going to put my email address in. So if you have an account and you can't remember the username and password, you can do it this way. Or you could enter in the username and it will send it to the email. But I'm going to enter in the email because most of us remember our email. And then when I go into Scratch, it, uh, excuse me, into my email, Oh, look, it says, hi, Mr. McLaughlin. You received this email because you requested a reset for your user account on Scratch. If you didn't request this password change, you can just ignore this message. Please go to Scratch the following page and choose a new password. So I would just click this link and type in a new password. So I would click that, type in a new password. I'm going to use the same one. and click change my password. And now I'm all set to log in. And it, look, it remembered my password for me. So that's nice.
So if you forgot your username and password, that is what you wanna to do to get that username and password back. Now I have an account all set up and my next thing to do is go in and go into my profile. So I'm gonna go into my profile. It says I'm a new Scratch user. I just joined two minutes ago. It says what I've been doing. I can write a little bit about myself. Teach Vation at the UES. Now, you don't wanna to give too much information because other people can see your account. So I just said UES. Nobody really knows what that is. Uh, what am I working on? New projects for innovation. Okay. And then this is shared projects. If I have a project I want to share to people, I'll show you that in a couple minutes. These are some of the projects I may have explored and favorited. And then these are some people who may be following me who are interested in seeing what I'm doing. Then all the way down here, there's something called turn commenting off. I'm going to turn that off for now. You probably want to do the same thing because we're not really interested in what other people say to us through Scratch right now. If you're really interested, you could leave it turned on, but I think most of you should just turn that off. So now I can change my picture. So I'm going to click on the little cat picture here. And I got to click on the word change. And then I got to go and find a picture. So let me see if I have a picture somewhere. New Hope, oh, that's a good one. There we go. It's a good logo for Mr. McLaughlin. Now I'm gonna click on Scratch and I'm back on Scratch and you can see my picture's there, my name's there. And I got a message. It says, welcome to Scratch. After you make projects and comments, you get messages about them here. So go into the message box and I can go explore a project or make a project. So if I wanna create something, so we're gonna click on create and create a little project together. I have my little cat here. We're gonna say, do something really simple. And most of you probably already know how to do this, but we're gonna click on when green flag clicked. That's this event right here, right under events. When green flag clicked, drag that in. And this is the coding window. Over here where the cat is, this is our stage. Down here, we can control all of the different sprites. So sprite one is our cat. I'm gonna rename him and call him cat. This is where he's located. Right now he's at zero, zero. If I move him around on the screen, these numbers change for me. So we can see down here is negative and negative. Over here is X is positive and Y is negative up here. Both numbers are positive and over here, the X is negative and the Y is positive. Now, some of you in uh, your math classes may have already talked about the Cartesian coordinate system. This is based on the Cartesian coordinate system. So we have zero, zero right here in the middle. So I'm gonna put my cat at zero, zero. I can just type the number in. Direction, this is the direction the cat is facing. So I can spin him around and around. 90 degrees is facing that way. That's negative 90 degrees, but it puts him upside down. But if I go around this way, still upside down. So I wanna be able to get him to turn the other way without going upside down. That's not a rotation, that's a flip. So what I wanna do, let me close this, set him back at 90, press enter. Um, I want to flip his direction, and that's another control. So I have to change his di direction. And I can have him point in that direction, 90 degrees. I can set the rotation style left, right. Now, when I do it this way, he turns around left and right. So he doesn't spin in a circle. So this is a very important block. If I wanna just get him to turn left and right, he won't go looking up and down. He's only gonna go left and right. If I want him to get to spin in circles, I have to go like this. Oh, I have to hit the block. I have to spin him all the way around in circles. If I don't want him to rotate at all, that means no matter what I do here, he's not gonna spin. So I'm gonna set him back to left-right motion 
that is a good thing for us in most of what we're going to be doing because we want to just be able to go left and right. Some things will have spin all the way around, but our cat is pretty good going just left and right. Then the next thing I want my cat to do is I want him to say something. So I'm going to get him to say hello for two seconds. Now I could change this to whatever I wanted. I could say hello to the world, exclamation mark. So when I sit, hit my green flag, that will tell the computer to make this event happen. It will set the rotation style so it doesn't spin around and it only goes left and right. And it will say hello to the world for two seconds. Let's try that. And it worked. He said hello to the world for two seconds. That was perfect. The next thing I want to do is I want to change the title. So that way it's titled, right? Hello world. Then there's this beautiful little orange button here. Let me make this bigger so we can see it. This orange button is really important. If I click this orange button, I have now shared my project and other people can see it. If I don't share it, if I don't press that orange button, no one but me is going to be able to see it. So that's going to be important for you to submit your work to me. It also takes me to this front screen and it has my title, Hello World. And then I have instructions. Maybe there's some things for my user to do. So I'm just going to tell them, please press the green flag to say hello. And then I can type in notes and credits for them to know that this was created to mark the beginning of my scratch programming. Okay, so now I have my program, everything's done. I have some little things down here like hearts and stars, and those are kind of like people commenting and giving you emojis and letting you know that they like your project. Then I have a choice to either add it to a studio, which is kind of like a folder of all of my projects. So I'm gonna create a studio. But I got to make one. So I will have to go into my stuff. And I have to go and click on new studio. And I have to add a project. Now I can add it by URL, which it could be somebody else's project, or I could just add mine. So I'm going to add mine. And I'm going to click up here and change the name of the studio and call it My Class Projects. So this is a good way to organize your information. So you have your class projects all in one spot and you can find them pretty easily. You can even choose a picture for this. So maybe we want to go through and choose a picture. I think I am going to choose my innovation logo. Let's see, right there. Okay, oh, it's too big. So I'll have to shrink it later and choose the Innovation logo. It has to be 500 by 500 pixels. So I'll go back and do that. So then I'm gonna go back and click on my project again. It takes me right back to my project. I can see hello world, see all my directions. If I wanna share this either in Canvas or to um, another student or to Seesaw, whatever, or if I just want to make a card or something and send it to a grown up that is a favorite of mine, I can click copy link. And I can click copy link or I can embed it. Now, some of you might know about embedding, but you can embed it and put it into other things like we could put it in and embed it inside a canvas. And that's a little bit more complicated and maybe we'll do more of that later. So we're just gonna copy the link and then I can share the link. So I can email it to somebody. So I'm gonna go into my email. I'm gonna compose an email and I'm gonna send it to myself. My first project. 
and I'm gonna just click send and now I have that sent to my email. Now, if you want, you can use this and send it in Canvas or send it in Seesaw um, or wherever your teacher is having you submit your projects. For innovation, we're gonna be submitting our projects in Canvas. So you'll be adding the project in Canvas. And I'll show you how to do that. So we go into Canvas, which is nhsd. Oops, that is the wrong link. Let me just go into this, do it this way. Because I gotta be in my school account to do it. nhsd.instructure.com. I gotta choose my school account. And then I would just find a course that I'm in. And I would look to see if there's an assignment that I would submit it to. Let me see if I can find an assignment to submit this to. Challenge files, maybe this is a good one. No, let me go back to another course. Let me do it this one. And here's an assignment. So I click on the assignment and it would tell me how to submit and I would probably type in the link and a text entry, but I'll show you that when we actually have assignments up in our course. So now let's go back to Scratch. And we could go ahead and explore some other things that are in Scratch um, and see what other programs are here. So this is fun. So like a virtual Halloween party, that looks fun. Oh, this is a studio and shows all different studios that people created about Halloween. So you could click on any one of these projects. And some of them are games and some of them are just projects. Ooh, spooky. Press any key to proceed. Ooh, well that's kind of cool. Oh, and I can use the arrow keys to move the ghost. Wow, uh-oh, probably wanna watch out for the fire. And I just go through the devil different, uh-oh. And I gotta watch out. This is hard. Definitely hard. So, um, you get to play with different games and try different things and make your own code. And that is what Scratch is all about. I'm gonna post an assignment for you to work on in this week. And I hope you had a whole lot of fun.